Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for clicking on this episode of Rank the Movies. What a month we've had. We've talked about various musicals. We've talked Devil's Carnival and Hallelujah the Devil's Carnival. We've talked Fiddler on the Roof. We've talked Cats. We've talked Across the Universe. And now we're talking Jesus Christ Superstar, which is my third favorite musical of all time. It is in my top 100 movies. Um, the producers, which you can hear me talk about back in a video where I compare it to its um, non-musical version and where Leo and Max go wrong um, comes before it and Little Shop of Horrors, which there's a couple of places on the channel where I've talked Little Shop of Horrors, which is why I decided Jesus Christ Superstar would end it. It is um, the one musical on my top 100. Um, it's the highest ranked musical on my top 100. I haven't given a lot of time to because I don't think I've talked Repo the Genetic Opera really. Um on the channel, but that's lower than this. So, Jesus Christ Superstar. We are here. We are at Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, so, this this is a musical by Tim Rice and I want to say Andrew Lloyd Webber, but I don't think... Oh, no! Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber. Um, it started off as a stage show. It then transitioned into a musical. This musical was made in the 70s, and it looks like it was made in the 70s. Um, basically, the, the concept isn't that it's taking place it's actually shot in Israel. Um, so it's shot in the right location. It's actually shot in the Middle East, where it should be, um, but it is a bunch of actors and people coming in to make this movie. And they show it um, at the beginning, because they use the... Um... Wow, I totally forgot musical terms. Um... Wow. Overture. They use the overture to kind of set this up with a bus pulling up, and you see people getting out of the bus and passing down um, all the props and costumes and equipment that they're going to be using to make this. To make this, um, You see them passing it all out. Um, so it is very much saying that this isn't a biopic, that it is actually people recreating a musical, but it's done very nicely, and it kind of gives you a quick introduction to all of the actors before you know who they're playing, um, just by showing you like costume pieces and stuff so you identify them later. Um, the only person you don't see in this setup is Ted Neely, who plays Jesus. Um, he isn't here because he's Jesus, and they're keeping him to be Jesus. Um, this this all ends when Carl, well, I almost said Carl Weathers, and I know that is that is real real wrong. It's Carl Anderson. Um, when Carl Anderson um, walks off, he's playing Judas, and Judas has the first song of this rock opera, um, where he begins wondering, questioning if Jesus knows what he's doing, and if he understands that what he's bringing down onto the Jewish people is war. Um, and then if the people who follow Jesus understand what the hell is going on and what will come. So basically what this, what this musical tries to do, what Tim Morris and Andrew Lloyd Webber try to do is they try to figure out the thought process behind Judas betraying Christ, behind Pilate uh, allowing him to be executed, behind the Pharaoh, the Pharisees from wanting Jesus dead. He tries to like look at it and then go, okay, how did these people, th how, what is a possible way that this went with the thought process? How did these people go from just normal people to we need this guy dead? Or we're willing to kill this guy. Um, and that's kind of what the music, the rock opera looks like. Everything is done through song. There's very few spoken words um, in, in this entire movie that is not in any way musical. There are a couple of songs that are just spoken word songs, but they're still spoken word to music. Um, it's, it's a very interesting rock opera. I've always enjoyed it. Um, I actually w wasn't aware of it until 2003, 2004. Um, somewhere in there, whatever year Shaun of the Dead came out. Because I literally bought a copy of this and a copy of Shaun of the Dead, um, and I watched both of them in the same night. And that might be one of... Uh, I, I remember really liking that night, given the fact both are in my top 100. I really liked that night of uh, watching these two movies back-to-back. -back. Um, I enjoyed it. And it was just one of those things. It was um, one of my friends... Uh, was a huge fan of this musical. I'm a huge fan of Carl Anderson. 
um, who is Judas, and really wanted me to see it. Really, like, was saying, hey, you need to watch Jesus Christ Superstar. You need to watch it. You need to watch it. But didn't want to watch it with me because I think he didn't want to sour my experience. He just wanted me to watch it. Um, so I found a copy of it at Best Buy one day, and I bought it, and I checked it out, and I fell in love with this rock opera. Um, I own the soundtrack. Uh, obviously, I have the Blu-ray. Um, because I did. I just, I just really, really enjoy this movie. Um, I don't think I have a VHS. I didn't check before I started filming. Um, I don't think I do. I don't think I've ever found it on VHS. I had a Laserdisc, but the cover looked horrendous. Because it was literally like, you know, something pulling back. And it was, geez, it was like either real small. It wasn't a good Laserdisc cover. Like, if I was in a store back buying Laserdiscs back when they were new, it was a Laserdisc cover that would not have made me go, oh, this is Jesus Christ Superstar. Because um, even the title wasn't that big on it. So I just feel like it was a poorly made Laserdisc cover. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy this movie. Um, I think it, it tells a good story. Do I think it's an accurate representation? No, obviously not. It is not an accurate representation of what happened when Christ was crucified. But does it tell that story? Do you get all the necessary beats? Is is Jesus in this movie definitely Jesus, the Son of God? Yes. Um, there's no mistaking that Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber went, he's the Son of God, and that's what happens. It's not... You know, you don't have moments of him, like, contemplating, doing something un-Jesus-like. He just does uh, Jesus. Because it is, it's, this, it's, this Matthew, Matthew, the book of Matthew is what they used to figure out the structure. Um, what see, the scenes and the structure, so the Last Supper, which is done slightly different because it's in the garden, not in the upper room. Um, and they do hit the Da Vinci pose, which, I mean, come on. I've, I've done that, too, where I've done something biblically, um, and I've just gone, ah, they're going to hit the Da Vinci pose. Why are they hitting the Da Vinci pose? Because. Because that's what's happening. Because that's what's going on. It's the disciples and Jesus. you got to do the Da Vinci. Um, so, yeah. It, it's an interesting movie. Great music. Amazing music. If you've never checked out Jesus Christ Superstar, definitely, definitely go out and do that. Um, it's, it's a wonderful musical. I, I really do love it. Alright, so, I'm gonna stop, um, talking about Jesus Christ Superstar, and the reason I didn't get into the plot that incredibly much, um, is because, again, it's the book of Matthew, go read the book of Matthew, and that's the plot. Um, highlights, you know what, I guess I'm not done talking about it, uh, highlights, <laughs> um, there's a song that actually isn't in the stage version. Because, again, this started off as a stage version. They turned it into a movie. Um, there's a song that only, uh, that originally was meant for the movie between Caiaphas and Annas, two of the um, Jewish people? Wow. Um, they were Pharisees, two of the Pharisees. Um... And it's, it's them discussing Jesus and coming to the conclusion that they need to go to the council of Pharisees and make them all see that he's a threat. That um, nothing good will come from Jesus. Which plays into a song later on, which is also a really good song, um, where they actually do go to the Pharisees. So when they actually do propose it. So it kind of just fleshes them out a little bit, which is really cool. Um, I think Pilate is my favorite character. As far as musically goes, I think I love his music. He's the one that does more of the sing talk, which I guess for somebody like me who isn't a strong singer, I kind of like that. You know, if I, I can just sit there and uh, be able to sing talk versus actually sing. I kind of like that. Also, it's it's great moments. It's a great... He, the actor does a great job playing the beats of should he... Um, go through with what the crowd wants, should he not. Um, once he tries to appease the crowd by having him lashed, like, it's it's just, he's trying to appease the crowd by not destroying himself. The one change from the Bible they did um, make to keep characters down 
is that he's the one that has the dream of um, what happens after Pilate, if Pilate crucifies Jesus. In the Bible, it's his wife that has the dream. Um, in, in, the, in the music, in the rock opera, they just had Pilate have the dream. Um, because from a storytelling perspective, that's just easier than adding in a character who is there for one scene and then their justification. Like, it's, it's, I get it. I get that one. Um, I, you kind of feel the same way with Herod. Like, you get why the Herod scene needs to be there. Herod needs to be there. But that man does nothing more than his one Elton John inspired scene. Um, yeah, it's a great movie. I really enjoy Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh, definitely, definitely check it out. All right. So we're done with musicals. We've talked musicals for five weeks. Now it's time to move on to um, something else. And I'm going to talk about this for a while. Um, only because I can do a lot. There's a lot on the next topic. I'm, I'm calling it When Animals Attack. And uh, each week over the months, I'm going to look at a different movie featuring killer animals. We're going to have... We're going to have snakes, we're going to have piranhas, we're going to have sharks, we're going to have alligators, we're going to have spiders, we're going to have bats, we're, we're going to have um, apes, we're going to have, I feel like I'm missing, I'm only missing one animal. Or did I do an animal twice? I think I did an animal twice, actually, because I just said screw it, and there were just two movies I really wanted to talk about, and they both, and they both have the same animal attack. Or the same animal as the, 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 the attacking creature. And I just said, screw it. I'm talking about both of these. Because uh, I just want to. Because it's my channel. And I'll do what I want. Uh, so check those out. Like, comment, and subscribe to make sure you don't miss when animals attack. It'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. I'm not giving away what movies. I'm just saying. It's going to be a good time. Alright. Uh, I already said like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Martin Peebles. This is Rank the Movies. Have a good one. I hope you enjoy in life. And, uh, yeah, stay gold.